Wow. I wish this was beer. <laughs> I know. But I can't drink alcohol. <laughs> I know. I'm an adult, but granted, I'd rather drink something like this than having to drink something stronger. Why am I doing this? And why am I using the product placement for Pepsi? Well, <laughs> there's one that's more of a product placement than ever. Because I'm about to review the movie that was actually based on a book that I really love. Which turned into a 1995 film that I really love. The one with Robin Williams. Who's sad to say is rolling down by the shore up at sea instead of rolling in his grave which apparently that's what he's he's going to be doing because already he's been cremated <sighs> because it's obviously people are not paying any justice to him whatsoever by having to sit through this fucking piece of shit movie that I just saw that happens to be a sequel to that film and not a remake either, which could have been a whole lot worse. But, there we go. Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. Yeah, Welcome to My Nightmare is more like it. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, this is the new one with Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock, Kevin Hart, both of which were in a good movie in 2016 called Central Intelligence we got Karen Gillian from Gardens of the Galaxy I loved her in that movie as Nebula and she is a great actress no doubt about it she was also in the TV series uh, Doctor Who and of course Jack Black who already had a better film that's already similar to Jumanji Goosebumps I mean, yeah, he was over the top, but hey, you know, that movie was a present surprise at least. <sighs> Speaking of which, <sighs> the entire critics had recommended this fucking movie. They actually called this a pleasant surprise. It has a 76% certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. And I'm thinking to myself, in Keena Rockmore's voice, why? This is a prime example why I don't trust critics these days. Because they always have to come up with a lot of shit just to make the audience feel dumber. And this is a prime example of them all because these are the same fucking critics who fucking praise trolls with Anna Kendrick and just an ugly face Timberlake and this movie is directed by Jake Caston by the way who also had directed a movie with just an ugly face Timberlake called Bad Teacher with Cameron Diaz and Jason Segel he's also responsible for sex tape also with Cameron Diaz and Jason Segel with Rob Lowe Kind of ironic, though, because he had a sex tape. <laughs> yeah, go figure. And he made this mess. <laughs> I mean, this is the worst of them all. I'm really insulted. I mean, this whole fucking movie's really insulted my fucking intelligence. Because what really made Jermanji work was the whole idea of actually finding a board game that was hidden somewhere after you heard the drum beats from your ears. The whole concept of actually finding a board game that turns out to be quite magical where you play the game, they even tell you a warning about that. Yeah, like the <laughs> like the line, are you game? Yeah. 
the fact that you got a character named Alan, Alan Paris, who's played by Robin Williams, who started out as a little kid, he found the game, he was playing with his best friend, who's a girl by the way, and suddenly he got sucked into the game and wants up in the jungle for the rest of his entire life until he became an adult. Yeah. And the fact that he came back after um, both Kirsten Dunst and Bradley Pierce's characters uh, played the game since they found it uh, somewhere in the basement. And, well, they brought him back to life. And then suddenly, um, he went to find um, his best friend, you know, who's played by Bonnie Hunt, and that's where, that's where the action starts. <laughs> that's where we see a lot of uh, wild animals coming in, you know, like elephants, rhinos, <laughs> monkeys, snakes, you name it. I mean, a lot of wild jungle animals out there that just comes back to life. And it's like a huge stampede. <laughs> That's why it was such a fun movie. It really was, and I really enjoyed it. This movie just totally insulted my intelligence because they decided to come up with a video game concept. Yeah, how cool is that? Well, not me. I love video games. I mean, Jesus Christ, there have been so many better video game movies out there that I could think of, like The Last Starfighter, Tron, along with its sequel, Tron Legacy, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, for Christ's sake, was a better movie. Yeah, and that film could have done so well at the box office, but I'm glad it got praise when it did. The movie with Edgar Wright. Unbelievable, man. And of course, yes, this movie did made a profit and actually made a tons of fucking money. Made even more than the original movie. Yet alone the sequel. Which, by the way, yes, there was a sequel to this movie. A real sequel. That's from the book also by Chris Van Alsberg. Safira. I'm surprised someone actually forgot about Safira. The space adventure with Josh Hutchison, Jonah Bobo, Christian Stewart, Dax Shepard, and even Tim Robbins. And guess what? That film was a huge flop. I wish the money that they made for this fucking sequel, I wish they gave it to Safira and the rest of Jumanji as well. Because those two films completely deserve it. They deserve all that money. They really do. Because those were way better films than this one. It's basically just a bad comedy. That's all it is. It's a bad worthless comedy that I didn't even laugh once. Not at all. I, I wasn't even excited. I didn't even have fun watching this. I felt like I was just fucking bored, stone-faced, without a laugh whatsoever. And I'm just thinking to myself, why was this fucking movie made? And I'll tell you why this movie was made. Because of Sony's fucking uh, cash cow that they're putting up with. Yeah, because of Sony's stupidity that they're doing. I mean, already with, with movies like the Annie remake, the, the Flatliners remake, the Total Recall remake. Hell, even Ghostbusters 2016 reboot, which, I'll be honest, um, it's a time waster, but hey, you know, even I'd rather watch that than this. I just don't fucking understand. 
And on top of that, they treat movies like The Smurfs, along with its sequel, and even The Lost Village, the animated movie. They all get treated like shit, but yet movies like this get a pass. I mean, I'm so glad that the Moji movie suddenly got a lot of bad reviews. But unfortunately, that movie made a lot of profit. I couldn't believe it. God, man. It's just ridiculous. Fucking ridiculous. And the fact that this movie's gonna become a franchise now. And what's worse, they're gonna make a sequel too. God damn it. This fucking movie gets everything. Okay. Well, you know what? Let's get right to it. It stars Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock, Kevin Hart, Karen Gillian, along with Jack Black, Bobby Cantavelle, and you wouldn't believe this, but they also got Nick Jonas in the movie. Yes, a fucking Jonas brother. I'm getting sick and tired of these fucking Jonas Brothers. And this one's the worst of them all. Sick of that shit. <laughs> okay, okay, I know, I'm sorry. Um, it also has uh, Madison Eisman, Alex Worf, Sidarius Blaine, Morgan Turner, Bryce Darby, William Tokarski, One Ann Chan, and Colin Hanks. It's written by Chris McKenna. Hard to believe Chris McKenna wrote this. Who gave us uh, movies like the Lego Batman movie, a better film. Captain America, could have Winter Soldier, better film. And he also worked on Spider-Man Homecoming, which is also a better film. He's also going to be working on the new Ant-Man and the Wasp, which I can't wait to see that one. <laughs> Along with Eric Summers, Scott Rosenberg, and Jeff Pickner. Those are your writers, folks. Be warned. And it's directed by Jake Kazdan. Yes, the son of Lawrence Kazdan. Well, at least Lawrence Kazdan could do more better than, than he does, sadly. Yeah, whatever. The movie begins back in 1996 in Banford, New Hampshire, which basically just picks up from where it left off at the end of the 1995 film. Oh, God, it just makes me want to watch the 1995 film already. That's where we begin to see a teenager named Alex Wike, who basically uh, receives a Jumanji board game that his father actually found at the beach, which was apparently thrown at the bridge by, uh, of course, Alan Parrish and Sarah Willow 27 years ago. I knew I was in trouble when Alex actually says, who plays board games anymore? While he's just playing his PlayStation and not paying attention to his parents. Oh, Jesus Christ. You know, in 1996, people have been playing board games. And guess what? They still play board games today. See, now you know why the writer is a fucking idiot. Ugh, whatever. But then that night, the board game suddenly got transferred into, you're going to love this, a video game console that looks almost exactly like a replica of the Atari 2600. Yes, the video game console that my dad had. And he suddenly got teleported too, inside the game. It had that green jewel in there too. Wow. How did this happen? 
<laughs> Doesn't explain much. Or it'll, maybe it just happens somehow, some way, magically. Whatever. Well, 20 years later, in 2016, one of the worst years of my life, that's where we meet four students in Brantford High School. Yeah, one is Spencer Giblin, who's basically a nerdy guy who looks almost like a Jonas brother. I'm so surprised to find out. <laughs> um, he got a um, his best friend is a jock and he's black too named Fridge which yeah, his name is Anthony Johnson then we get a girl who's basically a neuristic spoiled pretty brat who loves to hang around with her cell phone taking some selfies on her selfie stick just have fun with it. <laughs> Named Bethany Rocker. And then of course we got a shy girl <laughs> named Marfa Capley. That's your cast guys. That's your fucking cast. <laughs> oh my god. I mean geez they have to go for another breakfast club idea here. Okay anyway. Well, during that day, four students had got into bigger trouble, mostly because they're not paying attention to their teachers, including in P class, which is even worse. So now, the principal had sent all four students in detention. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, they actually found the video game console that we just saw right from the beginning of the movie. <laughs> now I'm trying to think to myself, where did this came from? How was this found? <laughs> and why was it in the basement in a Brentford High School? It just doesn't fucking explain. Well, anyway. They, they play the video game by checking it out, they hook it up to the TV, and that's when they started to get sucked into it by going through all these levels. We meet the adult characters of themselves, yep, which is Dr. Smolder's Bravestone, Professor Sheldon, Frank and Moose of Finbar, and Ruby Runhouse. All of which are played by Drain Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock, Jack Black, Kevin Hart, and Karen Gillian. There you go. They're basically video game avatars. So they're actually inside a multiplayer action-adventure video game that they're playing. So they found themselves inside the jungle called Jumanji. I just need a drink. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just I just really need one. Anyway, they basically learned the game from an NPC guy named Nigel, who just came in to help them out, be able to uh, solve all the clues and everything that you had to do in order to win the game. Yeah, try to do whatever you can. Try to find the green jewel. And yeah, try to stop uh, the villain. Yes, a villain who actually has mascara. But he also has some centipedes and scorpions crawling all the way into his ear. And he's the one that's taken over along with a gang of, of motorcyclists. Yes, a gang of, uh, <laughs> of thieves, motorcyclists who are about to go after them. And by the way, the villain is named Russell Van Pelt. No, not related to Linus Van Pelt. Oh, heaven forbid. 
But yeah, in, in fact, the, the green uh, jewel is known as the Jaguar's Eye. Yeah, the Jaguar's Eye, the, which is the magical jewel that started it all. Nigel escaped from Ben Pelt with the jewel. And the players must return it in its proper place in their eye socket. So, by a ginormous Jaguar statue, which is called Jumanji, so you have to say... You have to call out the name to lift up the curse, so that way, once it's complete, it'll stop um, all the villains and all the rest that's happening. And then they'll finally get to go back home. I don't know. Yeah, they, they get sucked all the way back to in their place. I'm just so discombobulated. I, I just can't believe I'm actually saying all this shit. Oh boy, but where to all begin in this fucking movie was that basically all four players they had to team up just to find the Jaguar's eye. Basically they're just spending time in the jungle which <laughs> they basically show the characters and who they are and you gotta love this because they're just throwing this as a joke when it comes to video games. They show their weakness and if that wasn't enough, Moose's weakness <laughs> is cake. Really. You know, yes, his weakness is strength and speed, but cake <laughs> is his entire weakness. See, now you know why this movie sucks so bad. That's bad writing right there. Bad writing 101. You don't come up with a stupid idea like to be your weakness by eating pound cake. <sighs> Whatever. Yeah, because we all know how that's going to happen. Yeah, they're all going to explode. So all, all these weaknesses that they're doing, yes, they're going to explode. And then they also have life bars too. Yes. Le they thought that there would be tattoos that they had on their arms. They're basically life bars. So, if you die once, you're going to lose one life at a time. So you only have like three lives. And if, if you lost these lives, <laughs> you're not going to come back at all. Pfft, unbelievable. Okay, well anyway, as they explored into the jungle, I can't believe this, well, apparently they're just spinning around, just doing what they're doing, throwing around, you know, they're just getting some cake, and all, and they're just talking about all their weaknesses, and everything that's going on, they're trying to find where the jewel is, that it, but unfortunately they're being caught by, um, Ben Pelt and his gains, you know, there's like motorcycles going around attacking them, you know, they, they didn't know how to fight, but they apparently learn anyway. Like, for example, I mean, you got the, the Rock just going around pulling out some punches, even though he's really acting like a nerd. I mean, you got, um, <laughs> you got Kara Gillian, just <laughs> as Ruby. Just going around doing some high kicks and and all these flips and everything that she's doing. They got uh, Kevin Hart as Moose just going around running like hell. And acting like an asshole too. And annoying. And of course, Jack Black as Sheldon just acting like a, a pretentious girl. Yeah, with that valley girl type and he's just... Oh my god, and, and you're going to love this. There was a scene where they basically were about to take a leak. And guess what he was doing? He just looked up on his penis and he just didn't know how to handle it, but <laughs> he just peed anyway. He holds his, his dick and he says, Oh look, it works. I'm peeing. Oh, I wish I had my phone so I could go on Instagram. That, wow, I learned how to pee. Oh my fucking god. 
I never thought that I would see this in a Jumanji movie where they decided to throw in a penis joke. You know, at least the original Jumanji movie had a lot of great jokes. There's even a joke involving the the board game called Clue and all this other serious uh, matters and everything where they just had to come up with a stupid joke in this movie. It's ridiculous. Okay. But of course, they also found um, the missing link, which turns out to be Alex, which apparently saves their lives from being attacked by the soldiers and everyone else. I mean, yes, I know people compare this to Pitfall, which basically that's what it is. It's Pitfall, the video game, where they're trying to escape from, from all these uh, wild alligators jumping up. And they're trying to escape from all the other animals around. Of course, we also learned that, yes, Alex, who's played by Nick Jonas is the one that was stuck in the game for 20 years. And yes, he still remembers uh, the 90s. Like, you know, he had hots for Cindy Crawford and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they had to be just continue uh, on their quest. So they got the Jaguar Eye and they're about to be able to to actually put it all the way into the into the, the land of Jumanji by actually hooking it up to the Jaguar statue so that would be their plan before Van Pelt and his gang goes after them so on and so forth and yeah so by the time they they complete their quest and just go back to where they came from and all that <laughs> uh, I don't know I, I just want to stop right there because I, I don't want to talk more about it. But I am going to talk more about what's wrong with this fucking movie. This is just a dumbed down version of Jumanji. Only, only as a wacky, raunchy comedy in a way. But it had some serious tones and all that. And they're trying to be fun and exciting. But it's not fun and exciting. It's just boring. I swear to God, I had to spend two hours of this movie feeling bored, restless, stone face, starving for a laugh. I tried to chuckle, but I couldn't. I'm just staring at, at the fucking screen throughout the entire two hours, trying to figure out why. I guess the only positive thing I could say about this stupid movie, though, was that at least Cara Gillian is hot. I mean, I love Cara Gillian, too, man, but I loved her in, as Nebula in Guardians of the Galaxy, but man, she deserved better than this. I mean, I agree she's a hot redhead and everything, but Jesus Christ. Same goes with Colin Hanks, which he's also the good thing about it. I mean, he's already starting to look like Tom Hanks already. After all, he is his son. As an older Alex. You know, and the fact that he's in a band now. And he has a family. And his grandfather, of course, is actually played by, and I couldn't believe this, Tim Manderson. And he's looking very old, too. I didn't even notice. Man, that sucks. Goosebumps is a better film than this. Same goes with Jumanji and Safira. Every movie is better than this. Yeah, it's obviously the characters don't know what the hell they were doing until later on, and they try to figure out themselves. But where's the humor in this movie? Basically, I just see, uh, you know, Jack Black as... Uh, Sheldon just going around teaching her how to do all these sexy moves just to flirt with these guys so that way you know they can stop them so that way they can go on their quest 
Oh, it's... Yeah, in fact, they even played the song Baby I Love Your Way by Big Mountain. Yes, the cover version of a Peter Frampton song. While well, she's doing all these kicks and and all that dancing, she's like kicking high on these two guys and all the rest of the other soldiers that appearing, popping up. You know, I'm thinking of the movie Reality Bites whenever I heard that song. Yeah, the one with Ben Stiller and who also directed the film, by the way, along with Renata Ryder and Ethan Hawke. I'd rather watch that movie than this. But thanks a lot. You just ruined such a great song. A great cover version of that's done by a reggae group called Big Mountain. I love their songs too. I really do. I know. And, and they played it twice too. Go figure. On a Sony <laughs> boombox. Yeah, there's a lot of Sony product placement, but go figure. Yeah, like PlayStation and, and all this other stuff. But hey, it's a Sony movie, so what do you expect? <laughs> I know, I know. It's amazing, too, because besides those actors, there are other bad actors in this fucking movie. And I swear to God, the teenagers who play themselves were terrible. Horrible. They just can't fucking act. And they decided to go for this Breakfast Club thing. Yeah, which Breakfast Club has already been ripped off many times already. For such a classic movie by John Hughes. I mean, they, they just keep doing that, too. Same goes with Power Rangers, that... The, the last Power Rangers movie from also from that same year and that was a terrible film too boring as hell this is just as boring too ways of talent too ways of talents god this is a coming from a guy who loves comedies I love comedies okay heavyweights is my favorite film of them all and yes I'm gonna say it I don't care but I also love other comedies too, like The Hangover, Old School, The Girl Next Door, Revenge of the Nerds. I even love all the other comedies that are family favorites, like School of Rock, which also has Jack Black. I, I and I'll, oh, speaking of Jack Black, Saving Silverman. I know that's not a family comedy, but. <laughs> Well, you know what I mean. It's a raunchy comedy. And I, I even love Elf with Will Ferrell. And I know Will Ferrell had other films that I didn't mind. I mean, I definitely love A Night of, of the Roxbury and all that. I mean, it's just sad, man, that I was hoping I was going to love this or not. Or maybe have a pleasant surprise for myself. But not me. I guess I'm smarter than that. Smarter than the filmmakers who made this. And of course, uh, Moose is a big asshole. I mean, basically not uh, getting along with... Mostly just like how they're not getting along. He refused to do Fridge's homework. So that's why they have a fight with each other. So, <laughs> Moose basically pushes... Uh, smolder off a cliff then he comes back to life he doesn't seem to care unbelievable man <sighs> I don't know man I, I just I just don't fucking know oh god this fucking movie just hurts my brain Oh, I'm just tired of this fucking mess, and I'm tired of talking about this fucking movie. <laughs> I just can't believe people love this film. I just can't believe it. There's like so many better movies out there, and they just took a shit out of it. You know, with all that money they made for this film, it's just sad that a film like Blade Runner 2049, or 2049 if you'd like to refer to, doesn't make enough money 
but this one does. Which, by the way, Sony does own the film. They released the movie with Columbia Pictures along with Warner Brothers in North America, but they did own the international rights overseas. And it didn't make its profit whatsoever. And that's sad. It tried to get there, but people just decided, oh, I'm not really interested. I'll just see something else, like whatever fucking movie they're playing. So they had to see this one because they had no, they just had no fucking choice. Yeah, plus it's the Christmas season. It was the holiday season. I mean, Star Wars The Last Jedi came out. People went to see that movie, but I know people got disappointed like I have. But hey, at least there were some funny moments. I gotta be honest though. I mean, even that film is better than this. <laughs> it sure isn't saying a lot though. <sighs> it just screams desperation. It really is. You know, you wanted to love this, but you just couldn't. You just sit there being stone-faced throughout the entire film. This is, of course, a cash-in for Sony. It's obviously they just don't care about the story whatsoever. They're not doing any justice to a Chris Van Alsberg book. You know, trying to erase all the memories from the original movie by using a board game. And it's just sad that they had to trick you into thinking that, yeah, they're not going to use the board game. They're just going to fuck it up. I knew this was going to be a problem. I mean, this is just like what they did with Annie when they decided to use a girl who happens to be dressed up as Annie, who has red curly hair. But we all know that's not going to happen. It's just going to be the black girl with curly hair. God, that's their genius right there, too. That's their marketing scheme that they're trying to pull against us. Oh, and, and yeah, because they don't seem to care for Robin Williams since he passed away a few years ago. It's like they're just pissy on his grave. I can't believe this. No wonder he committed suicide. Because of all the problems he's been getting towards everyone. I mean, his review, I swear to God, you know, the same critics who praised this fucking movie had criticized all of his films. Yeah, I mean, sure, they have praised some of his films like Deadport Society, Good Morning Vietnam, as well as, uh, I think, The Fisher King also. I mean, I love those movies, as well as Go Well Hunting. But then they also praise. Insomnia and One Hour Photo, both of which I don't give a flying fuck about. I'm sorry. You know, I love Christopher Nolan. I love the original Insomnia, but I don't like the remake at all with Al Pacino, Robin Williams, who's miscast, and and even um, Hilary Swank. I didn't even like One Hour Photo either because I thought it was boring. It didn't keep me out the edge of my seat. I'm just staring at the fucking movie feeling very sorry for him that he had to participate in this. And the fact that after that he started to do bad films afterwards. And forgettable films too. I did enjoy Robots. I did enjoy Happy Feet. I didn't mind Old Dogs which apparently critics hated. The same critics who praised this fucking movie. <sighs> Great. Granted, man. Another, it's another reason why I don't trust them. Really don't, because they obviously don't understand anything. And they're trying to make me think I'm stupid. Or everyone else. Fucking critics. Because these are the same critics who bash Bright. And that's a better film. The one with Will Smith. And Joel Egerton. Better movie. Fucking idiots. And by the way, it doesn't even look like a video game. 
they they just added all of that. I don't I don't see any graphics put into it. I didn't see any of that. It just looks like a real jungle. I mean, maybe that's just the way they wanted to come up with, like a virtual reality. And that's what they're trying to do, but it just doesn't feel like one. And I know there are times when you see the soldiers or, or even a guy just repeating themselves. Because, after all, it's a video game. You know, and plus, when you're in a video game, you have life bars. You know, you can come back, but unfortunately... <laughs> If you lose all your lives, game over. You're dead. You lose. Good day, sir. But hey, you know, if you love the film, then that's fine. To each their own. But for people out there who love Jumanji and hates this fucking movie, then go right ahead. <laughs> Just be better off watching the real sequel called Safira. Because trust me, that movie was ten times funnier and a whole lot better than this movie. Because both of them, Jumanji and Safira, actually had hearts to it. They really do. They had the heart and passion to go for. They took the risk and they succeed. Whereas this movie took the risk and it failed. It has no heart whatsoever. It's just stupid jokes over and over and over. I mean, especially when you see Kevin Hart just running around filled with a stampede of rhinos, white rhinos, running around. And yes, he, he begins to accidentally drop the, the jaguar's eye. And suddenly he goes back while they're riding inside the helicopter. Yeah, which... <laughs> Alex is a pilot and he's a lousy pilot. They came back and he basically takes it and he just says, Zoology bitch. And they come up with other stupid jokes. They come up with all these other stunts and everything. The CGI in the movie looks like shit. You know, it's funny how people criticize the CGI in the original film, which was done by Industrial Light and Magic. And you know, they criticize the CGI monkeys. Well, guess what? I don't... I could deal with that, considering that it's just uh, the early stage of CGI. They also actually use uh, animatronics and puppetry in the mix. So it just proves that they did use practical effects. I know Safira wanted to have practical effects. I mean, coming from uh, John Farreau. But it also has a mix of CGI there. They didn't use it too much. Unlike this movie. Which had a lot of CGI. I think mean, that's exactly where all the money came from. I believe the CGI was done by Imageworks. So now they know they suck. When it comes to this. Which is sad because Imageworks had worked on other good films like Monster House. The Polar Express. They had worked on Spider-Man. Although, yeah, they got a bit cheesy at first, but they got better. <sighs> you know, it's 2018, but the movie came out in 2017. And they just can't come up with better CGI these days. Even though we actually had some good CGI over the years, too. But I know people are getting tired of it, because they'd rather see practical effects. Whatever. Fuck this movie. Fuck Sony for coming up with a stupid idea. Fuck everybody who thought this is a this is a present surprise. It's not a pleasant surprise. It's a piece of shit. Damn critics. And the fact that this movie make money. Fuck you. But don't worry. You know, this is why I was lucky enough to see this movie for free. And I'm glad I did. And I'm glad I put that on my worst list already. I really did for 2017. And I'm not wasting my fucking money on a 4K, Blu-ray, DVD, combo pack. 
And I don't want to see this fucking movie again for the rest of my fucking life. There you go. End of story. So anyway, I give Jumanji, welcome to my asshole. Welcome to the jungle. Zero stars. And I mean it. Zero fucking stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later, much later. Bye!